Today I'll tell you about the latest chapter of my astrophotography journey. I'm now imaging in a remote observatory. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I wanted to share my latest exciting news with you all that I've started some remote imaging at a fantastic observatory in southern Spain, based at Pixel Skies and set up by the awesome team at First Light Optics, a brilliant UK-based retailer and one of my go-to places for Astro gear. I'll take you through why I wanted a remote rig, how I went about it, and my plans for the future. So if you're interested to learn more and maybe considering a similar move, stay tuned as I share my journey into this exciting aspect of astro imaging. If you want to stay up to date with all my astro photography ventures from here in the UK, and now in Spain too, then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. As pretty much every UK-based astrophotographer knows, we're in a constant and sometimes really demoralising battle with the weather over here. A consecutive run of clear nights is really rare, especially when I'm based up here in Scotland, so it can be a really frustrating process completing projects that require many hours of integration time. When the clear nights do eventually come, they're really welcome, but this can sometimes coincide with wind, a full moon or any other issues which can cause us to miss our precious chance. We don't really have the luxury of missing a clear spell, knowing that the next night will be fine, so we have to make the most of what we have. It's a first world problem to be sure, but my fellow UK astrophotographers will be well aware of this pain. Due to our latitude up here, we also lose true astronomical darkness for most of the summer months, so that can be an additional obstacle to getting out for longer imaging sessions. The winter should be an astro paradise as we have several hours of darkness, and at the time of recording this video in November, we're getting around 12 hours per night theoretical imaging time, but we're also in the UK in winter, so many of these nights are blanketed under heavy cloud. I'm also a dad to two amazing daughters and the husband of a super supportive astrophotography widow, but family commitments rightly take precedence over astro fun and can sometimes mean imaging takes a back seat. Finally, as we can all relate to, this hobby is pretty addictive and with an endless supply of targets available at the night sky, I wanted to challenge myself to capture as many objects as I could. More imaging time and editing also means I can improve my skills and experience. Remote imaging solves pretty much all of these issues for me, so let's turn now to the process I went through to secure a rig. I started hunting for remote imaging opportunities late last year and initially took up a monthly subscription with Telescope Live, who some of you out there may have heard of. They basically provide data from some of the world's best telescopes and observatories, which you can edit and share as you want. This was great fun and some of the data was phenomenal, but I was really missing some of the key elements of astro imaging, like choosing my own targets, framing them how I wanted, deciding in integration times and eventually taking the pictures myself. I then turned to smaller independent observatories where I could send my own equipment, which they would host at their facility for a monthly fee. This solved my control issue and meant I'd be free to use my own equipment under some pristine skies. I contacted several providers in the northern and southern hemispheres and every single one of them was brilliant, provided great info and detailed the process at their own specific facility. With great difficulty I narrowed down the list of potential places, but this is where I hit a snag. A personal snag to be clear, but one that made me pause and rethink things. As I was planning and sending several thousand pounds worth of equipment, I was obviously keen to make sure my gear was adequately insured. It was interesting that while the majority of places I contacted were pretty similar in their hosting packages and technical support, there was a clear divergence in regards to how they dealt with insurance. Some had insurance built into the price, some charged it as an extra premium, and some didn't offer any cover for clients' personal gear, so the onus was generally on me to source relevant cover. In regards to trying to find insurance myself, I find this pretty much impossible here in the UK, for the companies I contacted at least. If anyone has any experience here in similar circumstances, please share that in the comments below the video. From an insurer's point of view, the main sticking point seemed to be hosting expensive gear in another country in an often remote location, despite the fact there was usually always someone there on site. My responses ranged from no we don't offer that cover at all, to we can technically, but it'll cost you a lot. I want to be clear, this is no slight at all in any of the facilities themselves, and I know that the ones that I contacted with were professional, experienced and extremely helpful, but personally speaking I was a wee bit nervous in the event of ever having to make a claim if any of my equipment failed, and that made me pause to consider my options. Then I discovered the Icarus Observatory which was set up by First Light Optics. I was scrolling through their excellent online forum, Stargazer's Lounge, and I stumbled on a post of a recent astronomy show where First Light Optics were advertising their own remote observatory in southern Spain. And when I checked out their website I was super excited to find the perfect middle ground solution. Basically, instead of sending out my own equipment, First Light Optics have their own collection of ready-made imaging rigs within the Pixel Skies facility, which is located under rural dark skies in the province of Granada in southern Spain. I'll take you through a full rundown of the equipment that I'm using there, so stay tuned. I emailed the team there via their online contact form for more info and I received a lovely email back from Grant at First Light Optics who outlined the process for me and this is where I got really excited. I'll link to their website below so you can go check out the full details but basically you're able to sign up for a monthly rental with full control over one of their purpose-built imaging platforms. This includes your own personal login through remote access software with a full suite of imaging software available to use. The team at First Light Optics maintain all the hardware and software with the aid of the amazing David Wills, the owner and operator of the Pixel Skies facility. 
The roof of the observatory is also controlled by David and his team to ensure the safety of the equipment. So with this solution, I could rent and fully control an amazing high-spec imaging rig, use it when I wanted, and save massive amounts of setup and teardown time. I basically now set up my imaging runs each day at a set time, and the scope in Spain waits for the roof to open, and off it goes, all at the touch of a few buttons from my home here in the UK. No matter the weather here in Scotland, or if any issues that would normally prevent me from imaging arises, I know I can still safely image and get a fantastic result under some wonderful dark skies. I'd already seen some of the amazing images coming out of Pixel Skies in the Rastrobin page, and I'll link that below, so I knew ahead of time that the dark skies there were perfect for astrophotography. When I learned how straightforward and comprehensive this package was, I was pretty much sold right away. I had a couple of Zoom sessions live with Grant so he could take me through all the hardware and software, and he was really quick at answering all my follow-up questions. I signed a clear and simple contract with First Light Optics, paid my first monthly rent, and I got straight into capturing some photons. Right, let's get to the fun part, and that's the gear. First Light Optics have constructed two imaging systems based around their own Stella Myra 90ED triplet refractors, which have FPL53 equivalent glass. They offer a simple choice between a mono or a one-shot colour setup, so let's look at these in more detail. As I already do a good deal of one-shot colour imaging here at home, I opted for the mono setup, mostly to take advantage of the huge increase in imaging time that I'll get with this platform. The mono rigs consist of the Stella Myra 90ED, which has a carbon fibre tube and its own dedicated 0.8x reducer flattener. You also get a ZWO 2600mm Pro dedicated astro camera and a 7 space filter wheel with a full set of Antlia 36mm LRGB and 3 nanometer SHO filters. Guiding is handled by a ZWO off-axis guider and a ZWO 120mm guide camera. The Stella Myra refractors all have a deep sky dad flip flat attached to the front of the tube for protecting the optics when the scopes aren't in use and also for helping to take flat frames for image calibration. The rig also has a dedicated B-Link GK Mini PC attached to it and it came with its own set of calibration frames ready to go, but Grant advised me that I'm free to take more calibration frames when I need to. The rigs are all controlled with a high-tech Astro Mount Hub Pro and there's also a UPS included to protect against power surges or interruptions to supply. All of this gear is riding on an Ioptron Sen 40 mount which has been performing brilliantly and giving me some great results. I'll share some of the images I've taken so far at the end of this video so stick around to see those. I'll cut right to the chase now though and tell you all that I'm having a ball with all this and I would highly recommend this option if you're like me and was cautiously dipping your toe into the world of remote imaging without the expense and hassle of sending out your own equipment. I really want to give a huge shout out to Grant and David Wills for their speedy responses to my questions and quick fixes to my rare hardware issues. I've been shopping for Astro Gear from First Light Optics for a few years now and they've always provided me with exceptional service and speedy delivery times. I had a great comfort feeling embarking on this new journey with them and this amazing service has continued through my remote imaging experience. So thanks Gran and David for all your help. If you're interested in trying this out for yourself, First Light Optics are also currently running a Christmas promotion, giving you their own deep sky imaging experience at their observatory. I'll link details in the description below this video so you can go check that out. So what's next? Well first of all, despite the obvious benefits of remote imaging, I'm not giving up at all my astral photography from my backyard here in Scotland. I couldn't give that up and I'd certainly miss my own personal time under the night sky when I could see it and getting hands on with my equipment. Even though setup and teardown can be a chore, especially in the cold weather, I'll never stop doing it and it's part of the ritual of setting up your own rig. So you'll see plenty of videos here from Astro Photography Adventures from the UK. I'll also continue doing my gear reviews and tutorial videos which I really enjoy sharing with you all. I have a good number of products lined up to show you so please stay tuned for those. In terms of the remote observatory in Spain though, I'm excited that I can now bring some new types of astro related content to my channel and across my social media accounts. I'll be bringing you live imaging sessions, interactive polls in which targets you'd like to see me image, and future videos relating to my remote imaging experience, so I'd be delighted if you could join me for those. If there's any other types of videos or content that you'd be interested in seeing from the UK or Spain, then please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to include them. Well, I hope the info in this video has been useful to some of you out there, and if you have any questions, please get in touch and I'll try my best to answer them. I'll leave you now with a few images that I managed to take during my first month's imaging at the First Light Optics Observatory in Spain. With the massive integration time that I can now put down a project, I think these are some of the best images I've ever taken, but there'll certainly be more coming. Thanks for joining me, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and clear skies to you all.